Okay, so, um... I basically wanted to do another second... I want to do another part to Her Royal Morning Coffee, just because I want to make sure, in case if my hard drive does uh, give out, I want to make sure that I uh, get this out before it actually anything happens, you know? I want to upload as much videos as possible so I can actually um, be sure to get, in case my hard drive ever uh, gives out, I want to be sure that you guys have enough videos to watch or something like that, you know? But, anywho... You, I, I know you guys want me to just read, so... And just just continue without stalling, so I'm just gonna do that. Anywho, sit back, relax, royal morning coffee. Shut up and pour. The train trip seemed to dry rolls to be less than a date. But perhaps a per persimmon. Or maybe a lemon. He had not even gone to get a good look at Rainbow Dash's outfit for the Canterlot Spring, Spring Flower Festival before it's being stuffed into his own suit. Hustled into the train and assigned a seat by Rarity. Said rump plunking spot seemed to be suspicious, close to Princess Twat's sparkle, and away from both his supposed date and any nearby doors he could flee out of. But Dry Rose screwed up his courage, tried not to be embarrassed at just bringing coffee for himself and preserved. Quite Rarity, sprinkle, sprinkling little bits of monologue through their conversation that showed more research into his background than he was comfortable with. How's, how interesting, said Rarity. I had no idea you were working on an advanced degree in alchemy at the Ma Ma Mayor Schuster Institute of Technology Magic. Whatever made you abandon your thirst for knowledge and move to Ponyville? School, the school and I came to a mutual understanding, admitted Dry Rose. Huh. Rainbow Dash scratched the back of her mane with one wing. Same thing happened to me with Wither School. What did you blow up? Dry Rolls did not want to admit it, but the fact was probably already in Rarity's little list. She was hiding behind one hoof. It's not so much what we blew up, it's more what we blew down. You know how you're not supposed to flush certain chemicals, like catalysts, down the sink and a slab? Rainbow Dash nodded. Yeah, because they corroded the bottoms of the cloud out of the clouds and drip all over whatever Fosdale is over at the time. Or they mix, Dry Rolls paused. Do I have to go any further? No, said Rainbow Dash. Yes, said Rarity. Rod Sparkle said nothing but just remained where she was while stewing in a sullen silence. Anyway, continued Dry Rose. The north wing of the advanced of the advanced alchemy building doesn't really line up with the south wing anymore. But they've got to put an extra basement at almost no charge. Mike abruptly spoke up. Hey Twilight, did you did Twilight did that once with Spike? Admonished Twilight Sparkle. Sorry. He waited for a moment until Twilight returned to her intense glow at the floor of the train before mim miming a little explosion with his claws, with a wiggling, wriggling of his fingers that probably indicated flames. Sometime later, when the interrogation conversation had thinned out enough for Dry Rose to get up and stretch his legs, Spike called him over to a place in the car where the vo voices would not be overheard. He glanced around and lowered his voice anyway, and seemed to be genuinely concerned about something, or some pony in particular. Got that look, said Spike rather cryptically. What look? That look that every stallion who ever dates one of these girls gets. There have been others? Dry Rose paused at Spike's smug expression. Did any of them survive? Spike chuckled into one fist. No pony has died yet thought for a moment. Although the stallion who tried to date Applejack caught a bad case of country fever, and the one dating Pinky did spend a few weeks in an institution. Mental? No, a baking school. He's in Lost Pegasus right now, making air rational to dry roast. Sweet to eat and low in calories, I'll bet. Yeah, but that's not the point. You like Twilight, right? After a quick glance to make sure the alicorn in question was not lurking behind him, Dry Rose waved a hoof. What's not to like? All the mares in the Element of Harmony, the most famous group of ponies, and like ever, are likable. Except for Rarity, he added. As beautiful as she is, I understand she's taken. Darn right, muttered Spike. Coughed and raised his voice. So, are you really interested in Rainbow Dash? Not really, admitted Dry Rose with a shrug. She's cute, and a real fireball at the gym. Throws me around like a sack of beans on the mat. But there's nothing really in common between us. She just invited me to this flower festival thing. Can't you let flowers 
Spring Festival. Practice bike. Most tulips and most important, mo mostly tulips and important ponies standing around with tiny little drinks. Yeah, she did just to see Twilight and me kiss. So why didn't you say no? Asked Spike with the in innocent sincerity of the very young. There was a long open mouth pause before Dry Rose cautiously put forward. Would have been rude. Yeah, speaking of rude, grumbled Spike. Can I get you to talk to Lyra? She says Luna and said she says Luna said since Twilight was sleepwalking when the kiss started, the pool is still open. And it can stay open. Dry. I'm here as a friend and casual date for Rainbow Dash, that's all. So I heard you've been seeing my sister. Shining armor looked oddly normal for a prince of the Crystal Empire and former captain of the Royal Guard for Cantalot. He was not sharpening a sword or leading a squad of soldiers against an enemy of Equestria, of which Dry was faintly certain of Asteria and Ponyville qualified as. Instead, he was carrying a drink with a little tulip-shaped umbrella in it, much the same as all the rest of the ponies to the decorated ballroom, including decorated elderly veterans and well-dressed young socialities. Not that Dry Rose wanted to see any violence mar the festivities of the Canterlot Spring Flower, the festival particularly had any direct in him. It was just oddly peaceful compared to the mental picture Dry had of his first meeting with Twilight, Sparkle's big brother. Putting it down to the reluctance of Shining Armor's part to commit murder with his many witness. Dry tried not to knock back the rest of, the, of his drink and instead gave a weak smile. It's a little difficult to miss Ponyville's resident princess. That's not quite what I meant. Shining Armor took another drink without looking at Dry, which after a moment's contemplation made him just about the only pony in the large reception hall who was not keeping an eye on the two of them, perhaps in the hopes of seeing something more exciting and bloody than their present activities. They were doomed to disappointment, if Dry had anything to say about it, and he did. That's as much as I'm going to admit to you, said Dry, which he, what he had been thinking, but not what he was intending to say. I'm actually here as Rainbow Dash's date. Quickly, he added quickly, hoping to open some metaphorical space between him and her highness princess of pre-dawn pecking. Well, the two of you are just friends, asked Shining Armor, officially. I wouldn't even go far, go that far, admitted Dry. He hesitated for a moment, then decided to put everything on one roll of the dice since Shining Armor was Twilight's brother, and Dry Rose's own brother had enough blackmail material on him for a lifetime. He's been sleepwalking into my coffee shop before dawn for, well, over a year. Almost two now. I don't think she's seen me while awake until just as weak. Don't mention the kissing. Don't mention the kissing. For one moment, Shining Armor just stood there. Then, small hints of a smile broke out on his face, along with a suspicious tremble down his ribs, much as he were sus suppressing a belly laugh. You don't say. He eventually managed. Family trait? Asked Dry. Oh no! Shining Armor made a warding motion with one hoof as if he were attempting not to get something smelly or sticky on his good jacket. No, no, no! This is all Twily. That found her once down in the kitchen eating the next day's coffee grounds out of the pre qualitator She still claims Dad is making it up because he didn't get a picture. Dry thought about that for a moment, then asked a question that seemed to be to logically follow, given Twilight Sparkle's genetic ten tendencies. So, what happened the next time when he remembered the camera? Denial. Claims of photo editing, pranks, shape changing, space aliens. Although that seemed a lot more funny at the time, said Shining Armor. 20 page papers detailing the impossibility of the photograph details. Including circles around misplaced shadows and lines showing where the negatives were spliced together. I thought it would go away after she became Princess Celestia's student. Didn't hear anything about her sleepwalking other than really odd report from Joe Donuts and few guards who regularly saw her staggering down to the night kitchen. Shining Armor shook his head with a cascade of softly flowing mane that gave Dry a suspicious twinge of envy about his own short and tangled mane, which even Rainbow Dash conditioner struggled to keep controlled. Night guard coffee is only one step from the sludge. It doesn't really so much dissolve sugar cubes as melts in them to submission. And don't leave a spoon in it overnight or you'll wind up with a s all wind up with 
is a stub. Sounds like a fast, a false, a facility lounge in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Magic. Now it was Dry's turn to shake his head. I thought my falsicity advisor was holding me back in grade school grad school just to keep me trapped making coffee. I wound up having to charge him out of the flank to keep the other professors from joining in. That's why when I was asked to leave the institution, I decided to take the first opportunity I could find in the newspapers. My parents consigned for my coffee shop loan in a w and I was in business within a month. It was the only job I knew for a certain I was good at. So why Ponyville? asked Shining Armor. His drink was empty, but he seemed to be honestly interested in what Dry was saying, which was an improvement over the way Dry expected the conversation to go, and involved less being pounded. Dry Rose shrugged. It was cheap, something about a giant space bear tromping through the center of the town. The previous owner sold Java Lechaza to me for a song. Well, not literally. He added, thinking of the time he had used that phrase on Pinkie Pie. Java La Chaza? Shining Armor gained a particular quirk to his lips, and another set of subdued twitches to his barrel. Who actually named it that? What? Dry frowned and thought back to his old equish. The Java Hut. It was named that way when I brought it up from the old bead knobby. And I kept the name to keep the town's funny comfortable, even though I updated it with the franchise from Starbuckers. Some of the equipment he had was coal powered. I'll bet Luna he would have been able to operate it, but I prefer my equipment to have been made in the last century or so. Shining Armor's cheeks were nearly co concave and his lips were drawn into a straight line by the time Dry Rose had finished speaking, although a few small snorts of humor leaked out through his nose. At least I'm entertaining. Then the most particu particular, peculiar thing happened. Shining Armor abruptly stopped laughing, paused for a second, and shot a look in the direction of the Princess of the Night who was most of the way across the room. Dry Rose followed his eyes and caught Luna looking back while running just the tip of her dark tongue across her lips, much as if she had spotted a delicious piece of chocolate on the buffet. It was only for a moment, then she turned back for a conversation with Shining Armor's expected spouse, her royal, her royal pregnant pinkiness, and exchanged a few whisper words. Then a second peculiar thing happened. Princess Cadence looked straight at Dry Roast with an expression of absolute glee, past the same look on the unsuspecting Twilight Sparkle, who happened to be facing a different direction at the moment, then moved closer to Luna to continue their previous conversation in much quieter whispers. That's odd, said Dry, once Shining Armor had turned to look at his direction again. Any idea what that was all about? No, said Shining Armor. Although with a pensive, thoughtful expression, much like Dry Rose's own brothers used when they were hiding something. Huh. Dry Rose finished off the last of his drink. Oh well. I'll ask her about it tomorrow morning at work. Work? Echoed Shining Armor. Surprised you haven't heard, said Dry. Princess Luna's been working at my coffee shop in the early mornings. I think she's using it in a way to meet the locals and get familiarized with modern life. Dry Rose had not really wanted to spread the news around, and and in hindsight, it sounded as little as if Dry was trying to, to hide behind her wings to avoid some well-deserved something in a juvenile way of it. If you hit me, I'm telling Mom. Oh? Shining Armor nipped the tulip out of his empty drink and chewed it thoughtfully, then gave Dry Rose the most peculiar top-to-bottom look as if you were evaluating him for a royal guard application. Has Princess Luna ever... After waiting an ex excessive amount of time for Shining Armor to continue, Dry Rose decided to pick up the conversation thread. She's been the perfect princess at work. Other than talking a little too much, enjoying my embarrassment, whatever, whenever your sister drops by, I think she just gets a little lonely at the castle in the early hours of the morning and is looking for a little companionship. Shining Armor gave a non-committal grunt, which would have made Dry a little less nervous if he did not also look as smug as some pony with the vastly amusing little tidbit of information that he was just dying to share. Instead, the princess made a brief excuse before nodding, then slipped away into the crowd, leaving Dry stranded in the middle of the social event. I did, it did give him a few minutes before the next group of well-dressed ponies wandered in his direction, and Dry used that time to check on where his date had flown off to, as well as the location of the rest of the elements of harmony. They were all socializing as much as expected, 
Although, Princess Twilight Sparkle seemed to be, ha be having a miserable time, despite having obviously been primped and prepared for her friends for this occasion. Little bits of her mane kept popping up at random, and she just, just went whenever anybody talked to her. She did calm down somewhat as the day went on, and the group went through the flower festival festivities, although was his position besides Rainbow Dash and Verity's extravagant gowns, Drive felt a little like a felt like a little like a burlap sack full of raw beans next to a dozen elaborate paper sacks of gourmet coffee. Thankfully, the Cantalaw social scene had not yet twigged the rumors about Twilight Sparkle and her mysterious suitor. On thankfully, Dry had never really considered the backlash of showing up as the plus one to Rainbow Dash, the famous flamboyant rainbow-colored Pegasus. The worst reaction from his fellow Flower Festival folk turned out to be from a certain fantasy following among the other Pegasi of both genders who had their own idea about who should properly occupy his position. Tales were accidentally flipped into his face more times than he would care to count, and he began to recognize a peculiar sneer and cold cutting tone of voice accompanying the most jealous ponies. On the flip side, there were a surprising number of ponies who honestly seemed overjoyed that Rainbow Dash had touched ground with the male pony and took great friendly glee in rubbing her nose in previous statements about flying solo and not dating any pony unless they were somewhat were awesome as himself. Gyros had never thought of himself as awesome in any fashion. Well, other than the trail of the destruction he left behind whenever, he, whenever experimenting with any Regans more volatile than the coffee bean. The festival was awesome, though it was really a unique sensation to sample the various delicious spring flower petals alongside Equestria's heroes, and actually get to officially meet three other princesses of Equestria. Even though Luna was considerably quieter and more subdued in her mountain home, and Celestia barely acknowledged his existence, the glance while, taking to, while talking to other several ponies, thankfully. The whole trip blurred together until they were traveling back to the train station, and then on the way back to Ponyville in the afternoon. Dry, of course, took a detour into the di dining car, then wandered back into the car where the six mares were happily chatting afterward. Well, five of the mares were chatting, while Twilight sat brooding to one side of with her eyes closed, in somewhat of a sullen slump as if she was trying to take a nap, without even a book in front of her. Hey, lover Colt, he's Rainbow Dash. You're not sneaking off with some other mare, are you? Just the lady who is guarding the train's coffee machine? Said Dry, floating a number of steaming cups out from behind him in his magic. Now Coco with onyx sprinkles for Spike. Thank you, sire. Spike took the foam cup and drank deeply despite the bubbles of the steam still coming up from the bottom. It's still boiling, just like I like it. And a cup of marshmallows with some cocoa in it for, pink for Pinkie Pie. Said Dry while floating another cup of white chocolate frappuccino for the beauty rarity. Plain coffee was just a few drops of cider for Applejack. He counted. You're right, said Applejack, after a long appreciative sniff. Double sorghum syrup for rainbow. Oh, and give this a twilight for me, please. Said Dry after pulling out two coffees and floating them over to the Pegasus. And a hot carrot juice for, with two straws for Angel and Fluttershy. He finished. What did you get? asked Rainbow while hoofing the coffee over over to the snoozing Twilight, who accepted her coffee out of reflex and took a deep sniff, with her eyes remaining closed in a low moan of appreciation. Then the reaction of that Dry was expecting happened. Twilight Sparkle made a light lightning like grab that captured an unsuspecting Rainbow Dash behind the neck. Lips first, she leaned forward and promptly planted a princess powered pucker right on Rainbow's unprepared mouth, complete with a sun and Irk of surprise from both the kissy and the kisser when Twilight opened her eyes. It didn't happen, squeaked Twilight as she recoiled back backwards almost out of the window of the train. It sure did, replied Rainbow, who had almost made the exact same distance in her backwards split, leaped to the outer side of the train car. Dry Rose checked his watch. Are we still in your section of the pool, Spike? He looked up to see Spike making a frantic negating motion with both hands. Cool. Princess Pod Sparkle turned silly in his direction, her horn lowering to the point directly between Dry Rose's eyes. What pool? Confusion was good for the soul, and it kept Dry Rose's 
occupied fairly intact too. If he had to be put in the doghouse for spilling the beans about the kissing people, at least he had Pinkie Pie in there with him to use as cover, and wriggled ash from guilt to association by association. It actually turned out to be more funny than humiliating, because Pinkie Pie would mirror Twilight's lecture on responsibility behind her back when with identical posturing and facial consort shapes until one of her friends would burst out laughing and Twilight would spin around to see what was so funny, only to have Rainbow duplicate her gestures on the other side. After the third time, Twilight put Spike in the le little lecture group too, even though he was innocent. By the time the train pulled into po the Ponyville station, they were all in the pervertible doghouse, including one of the train conductors who had happened to be making his rounds at the wrong time. That was fun, declared Rainbow Dash, once the prisoner had been marched out onto the Ponyville train station platform, and the conductor managed to slip back on the, to the train. We should, we should do that again uh, sometime. You're actually not so bad, Dry. You're, you're not such a bad date, Dry. You know, started Applejack with a speculative rubbing her chin. Pinky, I've got I've got this here conference on machinery that coming up next week and called in advance. Since Big Mac sold down the farm while I'm gone, and I don't think taking Apple Bloom along would be very beneficial to our on our insurance rates. Wouldn't be too bad if in Pinkie Pie and I had someone along with us who knew their widgets. The cakes are looking for a new new oven, said Pinkie Pie as she bounced along. Since they accidentally used the last one to make a humongous cake, the mother squished all through the innards of the old one and left everything that baked smelling a little like burnt coconut, which isn't bad if you're cooking something with the coconut, but everybody's getting a little tired of the taste of coconut and everything we take. Or bake. Are you sure? Dry Rose looked up overhead where Rainbow Dash was gliding along. Wave dismissive. Don't sweat it. I'd be more happy than alone dry out to you two. Some pony's gotta keep you girls out of trouble after all. Then I suppose I can, said Dry Rose, rubbing his chin briefly like Applejack. I've had enough issues with the bean grinder at the shop that checking out what the industry is up to wouldn't be such a bad idea. And I have a fashion show in Manhattan in two weeks, said Rarity with a distant gleam in her eye. Mike is busy and it has been so difficult to find proper gentle- Probably one who would not gossip about any of this in indiscretions that you might possibly occur during the event that I had, considering simply going solo. Would you consider an overnight trip to the fashion center of Equestria, Mr. Roast? Uh, Dry Roast looked up at Rainbow Dash, then over to the two Earth Ponies and back to Rarity. Feel like a timeshare. Not that I wouldn't be proud of seeing you with Miss Rarity, but don't you think having me over with having me show up with so many of the elements of harmony as social functions could be considered? Oh, Trey! Rarity fluttered her eyelashes at him. Why, whatever you could mean, Mr. Roast! Oh, wait! Wait! He turned to Spike and used her magic to gently remove the suit jacket he had been wearing, holding it carefully and placing it on her back. With a beaming smile, she addressed the little dragon and said, Spikey, I know it's been a long day and I need to get all the girls' outfits properly put away for when they're needed again. Could you run along to the castle and get Twilight's bath all set up for her? And get a small meal prepared so when she's done at the boutique, she can just go back to the castle and go to bed? It would mean so much. It would? Spike's smile grew radiant. You bet, Rarity. He took off just as fast as his little feet would carry him, vanishing into the distance with nothing left behind but a pair of puff of dust. That was both thoughtful and creepy at the same time. He used dry rolls while watching the little dragon. I'm with him. Rebel Twilight turning into the direction of her distant castle. No! Twilight, wait! said Rarity, scurrying over to put a hoof on Twilight's shoulder, only to recoil at the obvious dust prints it would leave on the delicate fabric. That gown is nearly uh, all chiffin! It needs to be cared for, eased off from the shoulder, and cleaned with only the most delicate of touches on it, or it'll wrink up into a giant ball of snags, like the last gown I made for you. For just while it's broke froze. It wasn't that bad. Rarity tapped one hoof, the rest of her friends wisely remained silent. Go to dry, you could take a hint. It only snagged a little, tested Twilight. Around the hems and the wings, most of the damage came from when, it w when I washed it. Didn't say anything about not letting Spike dry it. Rarity did not say a word. Her expression was doing all the right, if you, s if you insist, muttered Twilight, turning toward the nearby boutique. I'm so, I'm so glad you listened. You can listen to reasons. 
severity with only the slightest hint of vindication she surely must have been feeling. Perhaps we could even sit, or, sit around the kitchen table and have a few drinks. Fancy Pants sent a most tempting bottle of pink champagne, and your brother included several small bottles of crystal berry white wine. If you put your ear up to the bottle, you can even hear it. Rudy produced a small white bottle with frost on it and held it up in the middle of the group while they walked. As she said, it was emitting a high-pitched noise while the light... While much like a child being denied sweets, only softer. Sure, as shooting does that look, you need to let your mane down a little. Sh sure, as shooting does that look, you need to let your mane down a little, sugar cube, said Applejack. Just one little drink with your friends, friends will help that. And that's my cue to run, said Gyros. It's never just one drink, and I don't really want to find out. Finish that sentence, growled Twilight, with her head down and a faint ominous glimmer around her face from her horn. Go ahead. You may return home once I have probably extracted you out of your suit, Mr. Rose. Said Rarity over the sudden snorting chuckles out of Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash. The rest of us will carry you on without you, but sometimes later, Twilight really needs... We, we really need all to sit down and discuss things between you and Mr. Rose. What things? Protested Dry Rose. How about the day after never? I don't care, snapped Twilight Sparkle. All I want is us for to go over over to Rarity's and get these clothes off so we can all go to bed. There was an intense silence in their vicinity, vicinity and when Dry Rose looked up, you could see at least a dozen of ponies who were looking at in their direction. Every one of them seemed to have heard Twilight's outburst, and about half seemed willingly to inquire directly as to the details. After a brief visit to the Carousel Boutique, just barely long enough to be just barely long enough to be stripped of his suit and escape back out the door. Dry Rose pointed his nose to home and let out a yawn. Morning was going to come around awfully early, and whenever he had one of his employees open and close the store, the next day was always trouble with things needing to be put back where they belonged, and little details which should have been taken care of were blossoming out of control. Conservatively, it would take him five days to clean up the store after a day's absence. If he ever took off a month, Joe expected to find nothing but a smoke crater when he returned. Literally, if Ponyville was half as bad as its history had demonstrated. He did take a quick pass by the coffee shop just in case, and was somewhat relieved to find it still intact. His little brother Raincheck was home early from work and greeted his brother, his big brother the moment he walked in the door with a hearty back slap and a sociated leer, which only grew once Joe's upcoming schedule was relieved. It was probably a little bit, a little bit of little br big brother, big little brother, big brother playback from when they were smaller, and the difference of two years much more pronounced. He took the ribbing, ribbing about becoming a paid male escort for the elements of hum harmony and stride, as it seemed to be a much more survivable job than royal smoocher for the princess of slumber. Whichever one of the two that was, after an hour out on the sun warmed balcony while reading to to calm himself down. Dry Rose settled down in his own bed, closed the curtains, and closed his eyes. Then, he got back up and locked his bedroom door, latched the wingo windows, and returned to the bed with slightly more reassurance about being in the same place when he woke up the next morning. Author's Note Notes on Night Guard Coffee Heck, comment that Luna made the nocturnal so that Pony could survive the coffee? Me, keeps the fangs dissolved. And I think that's about it. It's about the whole story right here. But um, yeah. Half reassuringly, this is not too bad of a long episode than I experience. Or but um, if you enjoyed this video, um, follow that like button and be sure to hit subscribe to join the clan today to become a warrior or so. Comment down and. Tell me what was your favorite part of the story. I'll also be leaving a link in the description for the original story. If you want to check it out. Which you should support the story because it's really good. <clears throat> Anywho, I got videos coming out um, fairly sometimes over weekends, probably so. I'm not sure, but whenever I get the time, you'll see an, up up an upload, which you should definitely check out. Uh, soon but um yeah i'll see you worries in my next video and ponies stay sharp